I'm Brianna Jones at the 2013 Pumper and Cleaner Environmental Expo. I'm here with Gerard Nighorn of Lenzyme. Gerard has been presenting at the Pumper and Cleaner Expo for five years, is that correct? That's correct, five years going now. And how's it going so far? Fantastic, we love this show. All right, and today Gerard is going to be presenting a seminar called New Untapped Techniques for Capturing Today's Customers. Can you tell us a little bit about that seminar? Absolutely. Um, we're going to have seven tips that we're presenting to everybody, and those seven tips are to help you grow your business. Um, a lot of the smaller mom and pop companies out there, uh, they can benefit from any of these tips. We just like you to pick one or two of them and get going with it this year. How has a changing customer base forced companies to redirect their marketing? Um, I think you got to keep up with today's marketing, and especially in the technology world. Um, a lot of it's going towards um, uh, like Facebook and things like that. So I think people need to learn more about using their computers and getting out there and you know sharing that information with everybody. And that information will be offered in the seminar today? Absolutely. Yep. It's one of our tips that we're going to be doing today. And how will the information people learn today in the seminar benefit their businesses back home? Um, well, when you get back, we're going to be talking about a little bit about social media, very important. So you're going to be able to get on, in fact, you can do it right here. If you have a laptop, you can start your social media today right down here at the convention. But when you get back home, absolutely set it up, get on Facebook. We want to see you do more social media because it's going to help grow your business. Thanks, Gerard. I'd like to also thank Cole Publishing. Um, you guys do a wonderful job down here. This convention, I always tell everybody, it's like the Bible. You know, you come down here, there's so much to see. Um, this is the place to be. You network here, and you know, all the businesses have an opportunity to come here and learn so much. So thanks again. Thank you. Well, I'd like to say welcome. Thanks for coming to another boring seminar. I'm glad you're all here. Are you kidding me? Come on, wake up, folks. In this seminar, we're going to have some fun. The gentleman right out there in the brown hat, wake up. There you go. That's for you, okay? I'm from Green Bay. Green Bay Packers, obviously. Okay, very disappointed that we didn't win the Super Bowl this year. Very disappointed. But I got to give my hats off to the Ravens. They did a great job, honestly. They might have squeaked it out past the Packers even, okay? But we're going to have some fun. I like to keep it interactive, so you will stay awake. I will be firing little footballs out into the audience, so pay attention, okay? Because you might get beamed with one. This will not be a boring seminar. Uh, my name is Gerard Nighorn. I'm with Lenzyme, Inc. Uh, I've been presenting now for five years down here. We like to teach companies how to market. This year's seminar is seven tips to grow your business. A couple of them are unique tips. Some of them are going to be, um, you know, probably things that you're already doing, but maybe uh, sh I can shed a different light on it, and you can learn something new from it today. You have to bear with me. Last week I was sick, and of course timing, you know, once you know it, I lost my voice a little bit, okay? So... There's going to be a couple of times that I have to go over and uh, uh, grab a drink real quick just to loosen my voice up. All right. And that's not going to go. Well, there's our first breakdown of the day right there. I guess I'll be clicking this by hand, okay? Six solid tips from the past right here, okay? The DISC program. I did this seminar roughly five years ago for this show. The DISC program is a personality trait program, and it's great for all you people out there that are doing hiring. You want it, you can go out online and Google this, okay? Roughly cost about $15 to give your employee this little test. What it's going to do, it's going to teach you about their personal traits. It's very important to hire somebody that can represent your company well. Wouldn't you say? Or would everybody agree with that? You can always teach somebody how to work. 
But what you want to do is be able to teach them how to sell also because they're representing your company out there. This program right here is going to tell you what type of person they are. Are they an, you know, an extrovert or are they an introvert? So that's the first thing I want to touch on. Second thing is collect information. A couple years ago I told everybody, because of social media nowadays, you want to be collecting information. You want to get their name, address, telephone number, that kind of stuff. But more importantly, in today's world, we want to get the cell phone numbers. And I'm going to touch on that. The cell phones in social media today are very important. So start gathering that information. We're actually going to touch on that a little bit later in the presentation, okay? Social media. I did a presentation on that too. Facebook. Huge. Huge thing for your companies. You get on Facebook, it can just expand and expand and expand. So if you don't have a Facebook account, you need to make one, okay? Especially as the you know, plumbers, pumpers, drain cleaning guys, that's what you have to do out there. Community involvement. There's a couple of really simple, inexpensive things that you can do. I know all the small towns have parades every year. Get involved in the parades. There's nothing better than driving your nice looking clean truck through the parade, yanking on that air horn, throwing candy out the windows. People love that. You know how many people there are in a parade or, or that gather to watch parades? I know I go to a small town every year for the parade. There's like 2,000 people. You can't get in a larger gathering like that all in one day. The next thing is to join your, your um, uh, the chambers, due to the chamber events, okay? I know, guys, you probably don't want to go, but that's what you got a wife for, <laughs> okay? Just teasing. Got to get down there. You got to socialize with those people. You're going to meet a lot of different people, and you're going to be networking, which we're going to touch a little bit about networking, too, in here. <clears throat> Constant contact. I've uh, mentioned this in the past. We use it. I know a lot of companies that use it. It's a great way to do a newsletter. A newsletter doesn't have to go out weekly. It doesn't have to go out monthly. Send something out every six months. Touch base with your customers. Educate them. It doesn't have to be very long. I mean, it's one page. That's all it has to be. Teach them something. Again, you're in front of your customer base. Now, has anybody noticed anything odd about this slide? Oh, did I hear that right here? Who said five right here? Right here. You got it. That's a Packer football, by the way. <laughs> okay, number six. Say thank you. How tough is that to walk up to somebody and say thank you for the job? Two years ago, I did a seminar, and quite frankly, the room was packed, okay? And I asked three people to walk out of the room at the very end before I got to this thank you part. Emotional marketing, that's what it's called. I had them leave the room, and I told everybody in the room what was going to happen. And I said, I want you to do just one thing as an audience. I want you to watch their facial expressions when they come back into this room, and I thank them for being here. That was the only thing I was going to do. So one at a time, I had them come in. And the funny thing is, one of them was my competitors. I had to laugh because I just picked them randomly out of the audience. But uh, they came up, and I actually did a handshake to one of them, thanked them for coming to the seminar. What do you think happened? They had a big smile on their face because I thanked them. Next person came in. I shook their hand, thanked them, and I gave them a card. They opened the card right there, and it said, thank you. Big smile on their face. The last one came in. I gave them a bag of candy, another inexpensive way of saying thank you. And it had thank you on it for attending my seminar. Big smile on their face. Then I asked the audience, what did you guys see? And they all said the same thing. I saw a big smile on their face. 
That's emotional marketing. You just tied yourself into that customer. They're going to they're gonna remember you forever because you did something so simple. So remember to do that next time when you're out there with your customers, okay? Thank you is a big thing. I don't know if somebody fix this or not. Nope. And the last thing, path to a championship. Of course, I had to give my hats off to the Ravens. I hated to put it up there with the Packers, but I did. Okay. Remember KISS. And I don't mean the rock band, okay? Keep it simple, stupid. When you're doing a marketing plan, you do not have to spend ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 to write up a marketing plan. Today, I hope you walk out of here with three or four things, and you pick one or two of them. And then those one and two, do those things, okay, for the year. Don't just do them for a week and say, well, that, that didn't work. No, you got to try them for a whole period of time. Run it for the whole year and see what it does for your business. So now let's get into the meat. Seven tips to build your business. And again, you can see I got my stuff on the bottom there. That's my little Packer helmet. We, we throw that on everything so people remember us. What is this? Who knows what this is? You got it. You're the winner this time. Get ready, because this one I'm going to whip. <laughs> QR code. And what does a QR code stand for? Excellent. Very good. It's called quick response, okay? This is a new way for you to start marketing your company. Everybody, and I mean everybody, has one of these today. Probably 80% of the population now has a smartphone, okay? And it's very easy to download an app that's a QR reader. So how can you use this? You can put it on your business cards, invoices, back of your truck. I really like that one, guys, because I can just see a bunch of teenagers driving up and go, oh, what's that? And they shoot it, and your, you know, your QR could say, back off or you're going to be full of, yeah, doo-doo, okay? Here's a great idea. Go to your local coffee shop. You know how you see the advertisements on the placemats? Just put a QR code on there and then just put, what's this? No name, nothing else. What you're going to do is create curiosity. They're going to want to shoot it, okay? Curiosity killed the cat, right? So they're going to shoot it and it's going to take you where? Whatever page you want that QR code to go to. So if you have a website and you have a special going on, maybe $20 off a pump job this, this month, $25 off a, a drain cleaning job, have that QR code go right to that. Bang, it's right on their phone now. What a great way to advertise. In your bags of candy that you got today, I gave everybody the information of how to make their own QR code. Believe it or not, web designers, and I hope there's no web designers in here today, were charging $50 to do this. It literally takes you five minutes or less to make a QR code. That's how easy it is. And the information is right on those cards, so take those cards with you because you can go back home and make one, okay? I found that to be the best program to use, and I've checked a lot of them. I didn't get one of those cards. You did not. Don's going to give you one right here. Anybody that didn't get a bag of candy? Holy cow. You're fired. <laughs> Don will be handing candy out. He'll be just tossing them down at you. 
I have the information up here too. I know you don't have to write it down. Actually, anybody that has a smartphone, you can shoot that QR code right now. If you're interested. Of course, I have one on the back of your card too. Here's another thing that's kind of special about QR codes. Does everybody remember, or at least who attended one of my seminars in the past, that we talked about seven touches? Who knows what the seven touches, you know, what does that mean? I know the kettles know what it is because they were there. <laughs> seven touches. That means how many times you will go out and talk to a customer, meet a customer, maybe see them in church, maybe see them at, uh, at the parade, whatever. But it takes seven touches before a person becomes a customer. That's another touch, folks. When they're sitting there drinking their coffee and they take their smartphone and shoot it, you just touched them. Okay? Seven touches. Always keep that in mind. That's usually what it takes to get, to get a customer to actually buy from you or do something with you, some type of business. Websites. When you're doing a QR code, I'm sorry, sorry, it didn't really show up here real well. That's our website. But if you see at the very top where it says educational, when you're doing a QR code, that's the UR. That's what you're going to copy. You're going to copy that address bar. So if I make a QR to go to this web page, that's exactly where it's going to take them because that's the address to that web page. Okay? So when you make your QRs, make sure you copy that entire address bar. That's what you have to have. That was my little advertising for lunch time today, by the way, too, okay? <laughs> I had to sneak that one in. But, you know, I had to teach everybody. Um, so it's called the browser bar, and that's where it is. Mobile websites. You got to size it to fit, okay? People don't realize this, but they go out and they make a website, and they got this great big page like you just saw on our, our website. And then they, you know, everybody's using smartphones today. So they go on their smartphone and they press it and they're looking at it. And it's like, you see the word, you know, L. You don't see Lenzyme at all. So you have to sit there with your finger and scroll across. No. Go to your web designer and have him make you a mobile site. He'll take your web page, downsize it, and only put the important things on it. So now you have a mobile website. And usually that is contact me, phone number, name, home page. Those are usually the four buttons you'd put on there. And that's it. So if somebody wants to go to your home page, they can press that and it will take them there where they can scroll around with their finger. But in today's world, let's face it, you see everybody driving down the road, which you guys shouldn't be, but everybody does it. And they're clicking on stuff and they're trying to find telephone numbers. That's why you want a mobile page. You press that button and that phone number should come up right on your web, right on your mobile page. It should say, you know, ABC pumping, 1-800, whatever. And that's your mobile page, that's it. Very simple, okay? So that's another thing that people need to start doing. You have to go see your web designers and have that happen. Size it to fit. <clears throat> More on websites. Should you build your own? Use a template? Put up a one-pager? Or how about hire a web designer? Quite frankly, you need to know what you're doing when you're doing websites. The one-pagers, and I know everybody thinks, oh, I got this for free, that's great. It, does you, it really doesn't do you any good. None. You will be so far back that Google and Yahoo and all those search engines out there, Bing, they'll never find you, okay? What a web page needs is content and links. And you have to give it some meat and potatoes. You have to build that into your website. And you gotta know what you're doing when you do it. So a one-pager is not gonna do it for you, folks. 
Same thing with a cookie cutter template. You know, they give you three pages or whatever. It's not going to do it. I know it's free, but it's doing you no good. You just wasted your time. Hire a professional. I think you guys should look for a professional. You got a professional company. Why not make it look professional? That's the route I would take. And what's the most important thing? Being found. Okay? If you guys type in our company name right now, we will come up on the first page almost on every search engine. And there's a reason for that. We stuck a lot of meat and potatoes into our website. Okay, so when, when they call it web crawlers, spiders, when those spiders go down and search out of Google, which is the number one search site, they go deep into your website and they look for things. And that's why we come up number one, or on the first page, always. That's what you want to do with your web designer. You want to ask them those kind of questions. Then you'll know how good they are. How are you going to get me to the front page? If he can't tell you how, I would not spend my money with them. Okay? And websites are pretty inexpensive. They're, not, they're really not that bad. Here's your most important things right here. What does SEO stand for? I heard somebody over here first, actually. Who was over here that just said that? Right there? There you go. Proud owner of a Packer football. Okay, search engine optimization. What I just talked about, the spiders coming down and going deep into your, your website. That's optimizing your website, okay? And you gotta know how to do that. Content. You gotta have content built into your website. You can't just, I'm a pumping company, call me. That does, that's nothing. You have to give some education. What are people actually searching on? Okay, you have to find that out. What are the key words that they're using? You have to build all that content into your website. And links. Links are very important. Google's kind of changed the way that they do things now and how they look at your website. And incoming links and outgoing links are very important to your website. And to back that up, I'm actually going to do something different today, something that I don't know if anybody else has actually ever done in a seminar here. But I brought in a professional so you can actually hear it right from them. Okay? This is actually my web designer. Hi, I'm Bill Kane with Packerland Websites, and I want to tell you a little bit about Internet health. When people think of the Internet, a lot of times they think about websites, maybe social media, maybe pay-per-click ads. And the problem is they think it's one strategy here, websites and social media and different things. Really, it's one ball of strategy. And we want to go over a little bit what's all included in that ball. Usually, you hear something called SEO, which stands for Search Engine Optimization. And a lot of people say, let's get our SEO going, and what the heck is that? Basically, there's two ways to be found on the Internet. One is organic, which the nice way of saying is free, where people find you when they're looking. The other one is driven, which is what you pay for. So if you have good SEO, you're going to rank higher in the standings and be found free, and people will find you a lot quicker. There's two main ways of having good SEO. One is on a website. When you're building your website, how often are your keywords mentioned? How often is your location mentioned in your services? And is the website a cookie cutter website or is it one built for what you're looking at doing? Other strategies are called off-site optimization. This is how many links do you have coming in? What's on Google Places? What's on Google Maps? How are people finding you? You combine the two and that works together as an optimization strategy. Our next thing is analytics. Whenever you have a goal for advertising, it's nice to track that goal to see how it's working. You can buy a radio ad and not know whether you're reaching 100 people, 1,000 people, or no people. With analytics, it'll tell you how many people are coming to your website, where they live when they're coming to your website. It'll even tell you what keywords they're using to find your website. The great thing about this, it's free. It's something that we set up in all our websites and help to teach people how to use because if you don't know how your website strategy is working, 
how can you tell what's going on? Our next thing is mobile websites. Again, this is another strategy working with your main website. The idea is, is that when people use a mobile device to look at you, over half the time they take instant action. Why do they use mobile devices? It's handy, it's quick, they might have a problem, who do I call? Boom, they hit the dial button. It's called mobile redirects, so your website is mobile friendly. Typically, some of these websites for mobile redirects are only $150, but they increase your sales dramatically. Social media, everybody hears a buzzword. Either they know they should be doing it, they don't, or their eyes glaze over. There's a lot of strategies with Facebook and Twitter. One's very social, one is business related. They each have a strategy, and they're not that difficult to work with, but it's something you need to be doing. Another element is newsletters. You may have an email list already, which means you're sending out a newsletter as an email. The advantage of a newsletter with something like Constant Contact is that it only costs about $15 a month. It looks professional. It tracks the people. It tells you who actually read your newsletter. But what's really exciting for web builders, when you send a newsletter, it matches your website with Constant Contact and all the buttons on your newsletter work like a website. So you're basically emailing somebody your website when you send them a newsletter. When you're meeting with a designer or a social media specialist or especially uh, maybe some of those people that promise you can be number one on Google, you want to ask how or why and they should be able to give you some straight answers. How are they going to help you be better on your Google Maps? What are the strategies going to be with newsletters? What type of optimization are they going to do? Keep in mind there's good ways of doing it and bad ways of doing it. They're called white hat and black hat techniques. And if you do the wrong strategy, that'll actually put you negative with Google and the other search engines. Uh, if you'd like to see this video again, see Lenzyme.com. Lenzyme will have this video on their website, easy to view. And there's other elements too, but those will be your key elements. And the key thing to keep in mind with internet health is make sure it stays in one ball. They all complement each other. I'm Bill Kane with Parkland Websites. I'd be more than happy to talk to you more about this, explain it in more detail and how it works, and that will make you more successful, give you a better return on investment. Thank you. I'm Bill Kane with Parkland Websites, building winning websites. Um, we talked about links. You know, you're going to get more views on links. So if you've got a, you know, a high-pressure jetting uh, manufacturer and you're building these, what you want to do is go out to your customers that you sold these to and ask them to link back into your website. Okay, That's one of the things that you should do. And if you're out there doing like installations, uh, big septic systems, ask your customer to link back from their website to yours. All those links are going to help with the Google spiders. Okay, very important nowadays to have that. Here's one I like. Remember the old testimonials where everybody would write you, you know, a letter, they would send it to you and you kept them on file and, you know, you used to take your book out and page through them all and show everybody your testimonials? Well, that's kind of the old style. They're good to have. Don't get me wrong. Those are still good. And, you know, you got the signature and all that stuff on them. But there are better ways. You go to the new style, right here. You want to have a video testimonial, okay? Video testimonials, you only need two or three of them. Put them on your website. People are more apt to watch a video testimonial and believe it than they are anything else, okay? And you want someone that's going to have a nice smile on their face, not somebody that's frowning, okay? So that's going to help you grow your business also. Get those video testimonials. They're, what, 15, 30 seconds long. That's it. And again, with today's technology right here, these smartphones, you can do a video right on the spot. That's how quick it is and how easy it is. So ask people. Don't be afraid to ask. All you got to do is thank them for the job. There's that emotional tie. You did something for them, they'll do something in return. Okay, so get those. And here's one that I don't think people 
pay enough attention to. And I happen to know somebody in the crowd that actually told me about this several years ago. Her name is Erin. <laughs> and she's sitting right over here. Erin um, told me about Angie's List. And this, I don't know, it was probably five years ago. I never heard of it. So I went and did a little research on it. Angie's List is going from a, little, uh, uh, a mother, like started in this thing in her garage, to being a national sensation. You make Angie's List, which is a, basically a reference or a testimonial to how good your company is. And a lot of people go out on Angie's List nowadays. And if I were you, I would go out there and check and see if your company's out there. I've actually done some research, and I've actually seen wonderful companies. I mean, they rave about them. But I've also seen some that I would never call them for service. And it's because they made that list in a bad way. So you might want to go check that list, okay? And hopefully you can make some corrections to your business if you're on the bad side. Obviously, if you're on the good side, you're doing something great. And I actually saw Aaron's company on there, and they've got a lot of positive com uh, comments. So, but that's a big one. Networking. Many people think of networking in the wrong sense. Some people think networking is just to go and meet somebody, sit at their table, and just pimp them. Find out everything you can find out about them, okay? I'm going to copy everything from them. That's not networking, and that's going to catch up with you eventually. Networking is listening and offering help. If you can say, let's just say something on a piece of machinery, and this person, you, you meet them for the first time, and you're sitting at the table, could be here at the pumper show, and they're telling you about this problem they're having. And you say, you know, I got a friend that had that same kind of pump, that had that same kind of problem, and he did something to it to repair it. I'm going to give you his name, and I'm going to let him know that you're going to call him. You just networked in a very emotional way also. If you do that, people are more likely to give back to you. That's networking. And that's kind of like where your friendships start growing with people from all over the United States or the world, actually. That's networking. Would you rather know 100 people on Facebook or would you rather know five people on Facebook that you know will go out and spread a good word about your company? Five. You'd rather know the five. Those hundred people, it's not going to do you any good to know them. If you can get an emotional tie and do some good networking with five good people, that's going to grow your business a lot faster than knowing a hundred out in the community. One last thing on this. This year, make a list of five people you want to contact on purpose. Maybe it's the chamber president. I want to meet that person. I want them to know who we are. They've got a little poll. Let's face it, They're probably, it's going to probably do some goodwill to get that name out there. So make a list of five people that you want to contact on purpose and then make it happen. Um, this next slide here, I actually don't, um, I didn't bring my wallet. I'm sorry, do you, would, by chance, do you have a credit card? I, I'll give it back to you, I promise. <laughs> well, thank you. Okay, we have a Visa card here, okay? <laughs> I want to show you this next one here. How many people have heard of this? Square and QuickBooks. Two little... Um, 
mechanical devices that you can put right on your smartphone. Okay? You can get paid right away. I know for a fact that getting paid right away, everybody likes that. Okay? How many of you are out there waiting sometimes 60 and 90 days, maybe 120 for your money? This is important today. You can take and get paid immediately anywhere. All you need is a smartphone and your little square, which I have in my hand right here. Okay? It's so simple. You just click on your phone and you pop in your little square deal. And all I do is find my app right there. And I type in, what's a normal, what's a pump job cost roughly? 400? Wow, okay. 400, zero, zero. Excellent. Okay, and then all I have to do, what's, what's your name, ma'am? What's your name? I forgot. <laughs> Lori. Type in Lori Horn. Enter. Done. And who said we don't get paid for these seminars? Huh? That's how quick it is, folks. By the way, I didn't swipe it. <laughs> yes? Does that work if you're out of range? No. You have to have you you have to have within internet range. Okay, so if you're on 3G or 4G, that's where you'll be able to use it. You don't have to swipe. No, you can type it in. You can you can actually type it in too if you want to. But that just makes it quicker and you actually get a better rate if you swipe it in than you do if you type it in. I don't know why, but you do. That's probably why. The security. Back there, sir? I'm sorry, what was that? No. No. This, this little square device, that hooks right into your bank account. It's two, I think it's two and three quarter fee. 2.75. None. Nothing else. That's your only fee. Hooks right into your... You can go right into your savings, checking, whatever you can give it an account number to. That's free. Everybody likes free. Yes? I saw something the other day that PayPal actually came out with the same type of reader. So if you have a PayPal account, you can do the same thing. Excellent. PayPal now has one too? Excellent. QuickBooks, whoever's running QuickBooks, Obviously, I would suggest get the QuickBooks one because it ties right in to your QuickBooks. Not only does it you know, go into your bank account, but now it's, it's basically done your invoice for you too. And that's free from QuickBooks. Question over here. You can go to your Square Reader and you can actually look at your history. I guess I don't understand that. Well, if you have employees that are uh, contracting customers and using the square, being paid by that they do a pump, let's say, on their phone, company phone, but they have it, what happens to the information then that's downloaded to that app on their phone? It, it, it actually doesn't. It, it, when it goes through the square, it goes through the square's um, yeah, secure account. It's not going through your, not really your phone. You're just using your phone as a uh, transfer station. That's it. Good question, though. Yes? I don't think they do anymore. I think it went to be, and they'll send it to you as long as you have the QuickBooks. There's a fee for using it. Absolutely. They're going to charge you just like, you know, a merchant account. And I think, I, I, I'm not positive but I think their fee is a little bit higher than Square. So yes, you will pay a fee per, you know, per transaction. Any other questions on this? No? Oh, one back here. Is the fee typically higher than if you do a conventional? No, 
That's, that's the, I, I was shocked myself um, because I do conventional. And the square is actually equal, almost equivalent to it. Again, depending upon if you're typing it in. If you type it in, it costs more. Okay, and I think it's due to the security, like you said. That's, a, you know, that's good. That's excellent. <clears throat> that's excellent. Excellent. And all those fees are different, by the way, through merchant accounts. Because if you just give them a number, you pay a certain amount for that. If you put the address in, the, the name, the zip code, the city your cost actually will come down. Be three code on the and the three-digit code on the back, the security code. That brings your price down. And it all comes back to security. That's what it really comes back down to. I figure if you're swiping, you actually have the card. Yes. And more than likely, the individual's there that has it. So that, that lowers their risk, and then they can cast that safety card. One of the other things you have to do on, on your smartphone, once you swipe that card and it's gone through, you actually give it to the person and they take their finger and they sign their name on here. And what's really cool about this is that you can go, okay, what's your email address? They give it to you, you type it in, send, it just sent them a receipt. So that's pretty neat too. So it's all done within five minutes. And actually it takes about two minutes. Send their email to constant contact, their email address. That's right, now you got their email. <laughs> Any other questions on the Square or on the QuickBooks? I highly suggest this, guys. If you can collect even 50% of your money up front, I would do it. Again, based on technology, and most of us have these today, smartphones, why not? It makes it simple for the customer, too, to pay it right away. Okay, I hope that uh, you know today you got something out of this. Um, that is the end of my seminar, though, right there. Uh, a couple of things real quick just to touch base. If you're not you know, out there doing a QR code, that's something I would do. Get it in a coffee shop at least. Put it in a church bulletin. That's important. And the other thing is to do that reader. If you can get one of those readers and get paid up front, that's going to save you, obviously, your cash flow. I want to thank everybody for showing up today. I appreciate it. And if you've got any more questions, you can see Lenzyme down at booth 3026. Okay? Thank you.